This morning, emotions range from grief to despair and even fury as Texas and America mourns the 21 lives cut short. And most of the fourth graders who were gunned down in that classroom at Robb Elementary School were just 10 years old. These are the 20 of the 21 faces of those who lost their lives. 19 children and two teachers, victims of what is now the deadliest school shooting in Texas history and one of the worst massacres in recent U.S. history. While the town grieves, more questions are being raised about what happened in Uvalde from the police response to the hours leading up to the shooting. Who was the gunman? How did he get the guns? And why did he do it? Here's what our KHOU 11 Investigates team has been able to piece together so far. Salvador Ramos was a high school dropout with no known adult criminal history. He just turned 18 last week. According to the ATF, he brought an AR platform rifle last Tuesday, followed by 375 rounds of ammunition the next day, then another AR-style rifle last Friday. Then two days ago, he reportedly sent these text messages to a girl in Germany who he met online, complaining about his grandmother during an argument over a cell phone bill, saying he was going to do something to her right now. Ten minutes later, he texted he just shot his grandma in the head and was going to go shoot up an elementary school right now. The shooting happened about 15 minutes later. The girl didn't respond until five hours later when she saw the shooting on the news. Of course, the biggest remaining question is why the suspect did this. Ramos's grandmother managed to call 911 after she was shot. She's still in critical condition. Her husband, the gunman's grandfather, is telling us if he hadn't left early for work on Tuesday morning, he believes his grandson would have shot him too. And Steph, there are troubling new claims coming out about the police response to the shooting itself. Yeah, this is all coming from a brand new report by the Associated Press. Witnesses and at least one parent of a student told the AP that frustrated onlookers urged police to rush into the school and confront the shooter, but say those officers did not enter the building. One parent even told the AP that he and other parents considered racing inside themselves because they were so upset because police were not taking action as the shooting unfolded. Law enforcement haven't directly responded to these claims, but on Wednesday, DPS Director Steve McCraw told reporters that 40 minutes to an hour had elapsed from the time Ramos opened fire on a school security officer to when the tactical team shot him inside the school. But DPS maintains that responding officers saved lives. That brings us to our live team coverage this morning. Michelle Choi, Stephanie Whitfield and Janelle Bluda all working the story for us. And we start with Janelle live in Uvalde with the heartbreaking story of a little boy who survived that massacre. Janelle. Well, this little boy's account is horrific. The kind of thing you never want to hear, but we're sharing it because he wanted it shared. He told his parents he wanted to come forward and you'll see they asked us not to show his face to maintain privacy. Now he survived with several other friends by hiding under a tablecloth, a table with a tablecloth covering it. He shot the, our next person's door and then we have a door in the middle and he opened it and then he came in and he crouched a little bit and he said it's time to die. Terror in the classroom at Robb Elementary. When he shot, it was very loud and it hurt my ear. When I saw the bullets on the floor, it was real. Heartbreaking, gut-wrenching words from a little boy who witnessed his friend's lives end by the mass shooter on Tuesday. And when I heard the shooting through the door, I, I told my friend to hide under something so they so he won't find us. The fourth grader at Robb Elementary came forward wanting to share what he witnessed and what he did to survive. I was hiding hard and I was telling my friend to not talk because he's going to hear us. The cop said help if you need help and then um, they got one, one of the persons in my class said help. Um, the guy overheard and he, sh he came in and shot her and then the cops barged in into that classroom and um, the guy shot the cops and the cops just started shooting. When the gunman was dead, the little boy tried to get help. Just opened the curtain and then I just put my hand out and then I got out with my friends because I knew it was the police when I saw the armor and the shield. He says his teachers, Miss Irma Garcia and Miss Eva Morales, saved his and other children's lives. They were nice teachers and they um, they went in front of my classmates to help to save them.
Well, the little boy who, again, we're not identifying at his parents' request, has seen a counselor after the shooting and reconnected with one of those other survivors. It's just hard to imagine what he and all of these families are going through. Steph. And such a brave little boy speaking to the media just a day after the shooting. Janelle Blue to live for us this morning. Thank you. At 637, now to the, the dramatic shouting match that broke out during an update from state leaders yesterday. Democratic gubernatorial candidate Beto O'Rourke took aim at Governor Abbott, saying that current gun laws are to blame for the massacre. 70 Whitfield is live with a look at the opposing views on gun ownership. 70, good morning. Good morning. Was it a political stunt or political courage? That depends on who you ask. But one thing that isn't in question is that this has re-sparked the debate on gun control. Beto O'Rourke, the Democratic candidate for governor, made his thoughts on the issue heard during a briefing on the school shooting yesterday afternoon, saying Governor Greg Abbott's gun policies are to blame. He was escorted out of the auditorium. O'Rourke continued his criticisms outside while Abbott addressed calls for tougher gun legislation inside. Do you want a solution? Have universal background checks. We don't have them. You want a solution? Red flag laws or extreme risk protection orders, which stop a shooting before it happens. You want a solution? Safe storage laws. There are more people who were shot every weekend in Chicago than there are in schools in Texas. And we need to realize that, that people who think that, well, maybe if we could just implement tougher gun laws, it's going to solve it. Chicago and L.A. and New York disproved that thesis. The governor says leaders in Uvalde told him the biggest issue they face is a lack of mental health resources. He says the Texas state legislature will be addressing that and whether more can be done to beef up school security. But he made it clear he does not agree with his opponent, Beto O'Rourke. He does not support more gun restrictions. Back to you. Whitfield live first this morning. Thank you for that. The fight over gun control comes just days before the NRA's annual convention that's scheduled to be held here in Houston. Michelle Choi has more on that part of the story. Morning, Michelle. David, Steph, good morning. Yeah, the NRA's annual meeting will go on as scheduled this weekend here at the GRB. This morning, you can see uh, NRA signs like these placed on almost every single door. But the, with the event taking place just days after this horrific shooting, it's facing a lot of criticism. Take a look. Some big names still slated to speak at the three day event include Governor Abbott, Senator Ted Cruz and former President Donald Trump. Some argue the convention is insensitive and should be canceled, but Mayor Sylvester Turner says legally the convention is a contracted event that's been on the books for the last two years and can't just be canceled. However, he did question whether it's appropriate for elected officials to be championing guns right now. I do not think that the governor or U.S. Senator Ted Cruz or any other congresspersons going and speaking sends the right message. And you can't pray and send condolences on one day and then be going and championing guns on the next. That's wrong. Yeah, the NRA responded, saying their sympathies are with the victims' families, adding, quote, as we gather in Houston, we will reflect on these events, pray for the victims, recognize our patriotic members, and pledge to redouble our commitment to making our schools secure. Now, some have pulled out of the event, including musician Don McLean, who said given everything that's happened, he felt it would be disrespectful to perform at the convention.